Hello again to another video session around data governance in Identity Manager. Again with me, Matthew Muse, and we will talk about... Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about just some basic troubleshooting for data governance. Um, we're going to talk about where to find information about what may be going wrong, if something is going wrong, but the logs on the agent side and on the server side. Um, we'll talk about some common issues that people run into with data governance. Uh, as well as how to troubleshoot things like resource activity um, that the agents are collecting and making sure that that data is flowing all the way up into the database. Cool, let's start with that. What I'd like to show in this video is some common troubleshooting areas of DGE, some issues that a lot of people have stumbled over in the past. Um, we have some you know, great KB articles that describe these solutions, but it's very important that I, I talk through them in this video. So we're gonna start with a very common one. I'm gonna go over here and start my manager. Here's my manager right here. And I'm gonna log in as a system account. So here's my Matt system account. Okay, we're logging in. And what I want to show you first is the fact that I'm logged in as basically a copy of the VI admin. I have full rights within the manager. I'm going to go to employees here. I'll click on John Alamari. And you can see that I do have a lot of rights here. I have a lot of tasks available to me. Um, basically, I have most privileges within one identity manager here. So now I'm going to switch over to data governance. And I'm going to click on Manage Hosts. Oh, access was denied while attempting to perform the requested operation. OK, so how come I'm logged in as a system user who has full rights everywhere else, but when we get to data governance, I get this error message. Access was denied while attempting to perform the requested operation. The reason for that is because the data governance service is running somewhere in my network. In this particular example, it happens to be running locally, but the, the same is true no matter where it's running. Data governance gets a request for something, like get me the managed host, or get me uh, information about security or whatever, right? So data governance is just sitting there. And the request doesn't come in necessarily by who I'm logged in as in the manager. It comes in as who I'm logged into the system as. Right? So if you actually run command window here, who am I? Because I'm running as Matico administrator, the administrator of my domain, it's that account that DGE server receives as asking for something from the DGE service, right? DGE then talks to one identity manager, says, okay, do you have an associated employee with this account? Yes. Does that account have data governance roles? That's the key. So it gets an account, says, where's the employee? Here's the employee. Does it have the right roles to do and ask for data governance things? So in this particular case, Maddie Co Administrator has not been assigned specifically to an employee. So again, who you're running as, not who you're signed into the manager, it's who you're actually logged into the workstation as that really matters here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to sign that account to an employee. So I'm going to find the Matthew Muse employee. Here we go. Here I am. And you can see Matthew Muse is a data governance administrator. That's great. But what we need to do is assign that Active Directory account who you're currently running as. So here, and I'll scroll down. Here's the administrator there. And we'll go save. Now that that's saved, well, it's saving. Now we can close our connection and let's create a new connection. Again, still signed in as Matt. Let's try that again. Here we go. We're going to go to data governance and now let's click on managed hosts. And there we go. Now we have our managed hosts. So again, it's for the most part irrelevant who you're signed into the manager as. From a data governance perspective, it's who you're signed into the system as. So again, that account needs to be associated with an employee that has data governance roles. So now that I have access, I'm logged in as a data governance administrator. Obviously some things, the first things you want to do after you create service accounts, assign the domains, is you want to deploy your agents. Now if something happens during the deployment of the agent, we have a set of logs that we store on the data governance service machine. So here I'm actually in the program files. 
One Identity Manager Data Governance Edition, Server, Agent Deployment Logs folder. Within that folder, you'll find log files that are generated when the data governance service is deploying the agents. So here, it's basically a full output from MSI exec. And if something fails, there may be something in there that give an indication what's failing, right? So certainly, if something happens during an agent deployment, check the agent deployment logs. Of course, any higher level errors will show up in the agent status as well. So there you go, agent deployment logs. Once your agents are actually running, of course, the agents will start generating their own logs. So if you go to an individual agent machine, here we go. Again, I'm just on my local machine. I have a local agent running, but what you'll find here is under program files, one identity manager data governance edition, agent services, all of your agents that exist on a host are gonna be in here. So one local host, only ever one local agent plus one or more remote. So here's my remote agent for that NetApp filer that I have. Here's my local host. So every directory has its own set of log files, its own set of security databases that it's collecting, etc. And here is the data governance.agent.exe.dlog. So here's our trace log for the agent. And you can click on it. And you can see all the things that the agent's doing in terms of its startup, uh, anytime it receives an access request, anytime it's finishing doing something, anytime it sends information up to the DGE server. So again, the agents are all out there deployed. They're scanning security, but periodically they have to talk back to DGE. They talk back just to let DGE service know that, hey, I'm still there, I'm still running, but also it talks back to DGE to send back information like here's my security index. I found these accounts to be ACL directly underneath my managed paths. Here's some information about some resource activity that's being collected. So again, looking into the agent log, there's gonna be some very interesting information. So from a support perspective, if you're unsure what the agent's doing or you're, if you need more detailed information, then the agent log will probably have the bulk of that information. Now you can get that log directly from the agent itself. So here I am logged into the agent directory. You can just zip that up, send it along. You can also get that remotely from the manager here, right? So here I am on the manager. We have a get all logs here and you pick where that's gonna go. It's gonna export the logs for that managed host. And then on an individual agent basis, I can go here and then here's my agent, export agent log. So the capability is there directly on the agent machine or remotely from the manager to get the logs. So either one, uh, either one will work, right? So those are the agent logs, but also very important is the DGE service logs. So even though I, you know, I talked about the agent logs first, even more critical is this one right here. So we have program files, one identity manager data governance edition server. And within that server directory, you'll find this log file. This is your key log file for everything that's being sent from the agents, anything the DGE server is sending to the activity database, anytime DGE gets a request for access information or for resource browsing, security editing, any of that, it all goes to the DGE server which means it's all gonna be logged here in this directory. So you're gonna see quite a bit of things in here, obviously. Um, anytime I set something uh, in the configuration, if, it, if something new gets set, it's gonna be in this log. Again, from a support perspective, taking a look into that log, you can zip it up, you can send it to support if there's issues that uh, you're not sure about. That's the key data governance log. All right. The next troubleshooting area I want to talk about is with resource activity. So again, the agents are out there, they're scanning security, but optionally, they're also watching for activity, things like security changes, things like file opens and file writes, things like that, right? So the troubleshooting of resource activity is a little bit more because you need to have a lot of things in place in order for it to work properly. So 
well, the number one thing, the zero thing, I guess you can say, if we're starting from zero, is make sure the platform supports it. So again, we have a lot of different platform types that we support. Windows, we support NetApp, EMC, you can add SharePoint, you can add um, DFS as a managed host, you can add NFS if it's on Isilon or if it's on uh, your NetApp devices, etc. So make sure that the platform that you're adding actually supports. So an example of something that doesn't is remote windows or clusters. Those don't support activity. For SharePoint, make sure native SharePoint auditing is enabled on the, on the site because if it's not, you won't actually be able to get any activities out of DGE. So step zero, make sure the platform supports it. So back to the first step. The first step is when you deploy, you want to make sure that, oh, hang on a second. You want to make sure, let's go to edit host settings, and there's a tab here for resource activity. It's off by default, right? So if you haven't actually enabled resource activity, it's not going to be watching for activity. So step number one is make sure that resource activity collect and aggregate events is actually there, right? It needs to be turned on. Additionally, depending on the platform, so for something like NetApp, right, which requires F policy to be there, we have this collect activity for real-time security updates. If that's off and that's off, both of these are off, then F policy won't be created, you won't get activity. As soon as one of those is enabled, either this, or this, or both, both use activity, both need activity, both require F policy, with both of those, one or the other, sorry, enabled, then F policy will be created and you'll get your activity, right? So just make sure the manage show settings, you know what's selected and that resource activity is actually being enabled. And then it's worth looking into your default exclusions to see if anything else was added Right, so these are just the default resource activity exclusions. So for example, if local system is doing something and you know that it is like a service is actually scanning something but the activity isn't reporting it, well, that's because local service is here by default in the, ex in the exclusions there, right? So generally speaking, should be modified that often. Of course, with resource activity exclusions, you probably wanna add things like service accounts for virus scanning, things like that, or whatever but just understanding these settings within the managed host is critically important so that's step number one is making sure it's actually enabled so on the agent side obviously that's where the activity is being monitored so looking into the agent logs is where you're going to get some very interesting information at least an indication of whether or not the agent is actually collecting those activities, right? So here's my agent folder. Here's my agent log. This is my local agent. And then let's do a search. Basically what you're looking for is the term usage, resource usage, right? So we're gonna actually find and see if we can find any of that. So you can see we have some line items in the log sending update resource usage in one parts, which basically that's indicating that the agent actually is taking some of the data it's been collected in terms of resource activity and then packaging them up, sending them off to the DG server. So look for that in the agent log. If you don't see that, then definitely the agent actually isn't sending that data up. The other thing that I, I neglected to mention, I'm gonna go back to the managed host really quickly, is this setting here is critically important as well. The aggregation, so by the by default, it's set to eight hours. So if you deploy an agent and nothing is happening, nothing is getting sent up to the DGE server, nothing in the activity reports, and it's only been an hour since you deployed that agent, then with that aggregation level set to be eight hours, well, that's the reason. It's because the agent is only going to send up information to the DGE server when the aggregation window hits right? So after one hour, you won't have that activity. So if you want something faster, say one hour or five minutes, if you're in, like if you want to just demo really quickly, then that's important right there, right? 
So five minutes, one hour, eight hours, one day. So the aggregation window is important for how often the agent sends information. I'm gonna send that to five minutes there.